guys welcome back to another one of my videos in this episode we're going to be going through and i'm looking down here my favorite facial oils and why i use them so let's get started i'm not even really going to do an intro right now because just keep it rolling keep it rolling so um i have been asked uh, by a number of people, you know, what are some of the oils that I have been using uh, for my face? I do use uh, Retin-A, but in conjunction with that, I still believe in a lot of the natural, 100% uh, pure derived oils from various, you know, components of nature, as they say. So, I kind of brought down everything from upstairs that I usually use and I'm going to go through each and every one and why I use it, maybe when I use it, how I use it, all of that. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about uh, that is one of my favorite oils, honestly, is the Rosehip Seed Oil. Now, I have this from the Now Solutions, but you can get any other bottle that you want. It's not a big deal. And this is the way it looks like. Hopefully this will focus in pretty well. Uh, tilt, tilt, Maria, tilt, wrong way. There you go. Okay, there it goes. And uh, this is something that's available all over. It is uh, one fluid ounce. It's not that expensive. It doesn't break the bank. Maybe, you know, eight or nine dollars. That's about it. Um, I use very little of it. And, oh, I'm trying to open this up here. There we go. And uh, it actually comes in this little, with this little spatula. You see this guys, little spatula there. And what I do is I just uh, put it straight on my face. And one of the reasons that I do that is, um, A, I'm the only one using it, honestly. Um, it is an antibacterial, so it's not like it's gonna get any germs in there. You know, it's, it's pretty, pretty tight as far as not having, you know, not, growing germs or mold or anything in there. It's re it's renowned for uh, facial beauty uh, properties, uh, all the way back to the Mayans and the Egyptians. Uh, of course, my grandmother used it, my mother used it exclusively. Rosehip among the Hungarian, uh, you know, ancestry or whatever, blah, 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 that country, they just knew about rosehip and all the benefits of it. Uh, there's other things that you can do with it. Uh, rosehip, actually, you can make it into uh, a jam and eat that. It's a wonderful, wonderful fruit uh, compote and, you know, that kind of stuff. But as far as the oil is concerned, it is one of the best oils that you can put on your face. Now, supposedly, rumor has it that the Duchess of Cambridge uses rosehip oil as well. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, some of the other celebrities. In fact, um, let me go ahead and look at this for you guys. There's a, um, there's a website here, and it's actually by Dr. Axe, um, and that's his website. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, read this to you guys. It says, um, what do the Duchess of Cambridge, Gwyneth Paltrow, Victoria Beckham, and model Miranda Kerr all have in common? Reportedly, they use rosehip oil to keep their skin smooth and blemish free. Now, it's something that Egyptians used, Mayans, like I said, Native Americans, all because of the amazing healing properties of rosehip oil. Uh, I won't go into all of the other things. Uh, you can actually... Uh, rosehip, they made a syrup out of rosehip that would uh, help uh, children uh, resist infection and it helped provide relief for diarrhea, stomach and menstrual cramps, nausea and indigestion. Um, so all of these things were available, I guess, with, you know, uh, years and years back. Uh, people just used rosehip oil for, and, and rosehip, you know, the plant, the rosehip, uh, for various properties for their health. So internally, there was a lot of benefits and topically, there was a lot of benefits. So that's that. I'm going to look at another one here. Uh, the next one that I wanted to talk about is argon oil. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up next. This is the bottle that I have. There you go. And this is one of my favorites that I use a lot. In fact, it's in my September favorites. Hopefully this will focus. I don't know if it's gonna, come on guys. Focus, focus. 
it, I don't think it's going to focus that well. But up oh, there it goes. There it goes. Finally, geez. Okay, there you go. Um, it's one of again one of my favorites, especially for September. I've been using it. It has a lot of antibacterial, antifungal properties. It is one of the best oils uh, for if you have inflammatory skin and by inflammatory i mean you know uh breakouts pimples acne that sort of thing um it's just wonderful to put on there and again i'm gonna put on my little glasses so i can read you a couple of things uh about argon now it's got antioxidants and it's generally beneficial for healing skin, which is irritated, cracked, or damaged, or even burned. It is best used as a preventative for dry or sore skin. And like I said, it does have properties of uh, reducing infl inflammation, soothing pain, and increasing the healing rate. So again, if you, uh, for example, have you know minor cuts or bruises or abrasions, if there's anything that has gone on on your skin that you need, uh, to have a soothing, calming effect, that is when you would uh, use argon oil. Uh, although you can use it anytime and anywhere, I particularly just love it. I think it um, soothes my skin. Obviously, I don't have a lot of breakouts or breakout issues, but I just gravitate to argon. It does soak into your skin quite well quite efficiently and very quickly. So it's one of the oils that is just, it permeates into your skin very nicely, hydrates it, soothes it, and you just, you can't go wrong with it. You really can't. It's a staple in my, in my pan. There is jojoba oil. And uh, this is, it says skincare oil, balancing jojoba organic. So there's that one. Uh, let's see if you can see that one. Put that in here. It'll get in here. There you go. Can you see it, guys? I'm trying to make this happen. Sorry for the, uh, there. I think it's going to pick it up now. Okay. Anyway, that's that one. The jojoba has a lot of antibacterial, again, and antifungal properties. And I'm going to just read you a little blurb about that. It's, uh, jojoba oil antibacterial properties that help control bacterial growth in the hair follicle it acts as an anti-inflammatory agent soothing the irritated skin it's got a uh, vitamin a and vitamin e in inside uh this oil as the main properties for the vitamins okay um one of the things that i do like and if you have um follicle hair ingrown follicles or uh, ingrown you know if you're shaving especially down there you know in the in the that area the private area or uh, any other area maybe under your arms uh, that you uh, consistently are having some um, hair ingrowth or follicle uh, ingrowth this is uh, something an oil that you can put on a to soothe the skin and to help it uh, combat any inflammation after shaving but also it it helps to break up that um ability you know how the the hair just kind of like grows into underneath that skin and gets in there and you get very very inflamed from it it really prevents any type of that sort of infection and believe me there is nothing worse because i've been through it where you know you've shaved and you know gals where i'm coming from you've shaved and a few days later, uh, you're starting to get these little bumps down there, you know, uh, and, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's like, it's painful and it's irritating and all of that. The jojoba oil, if you use that after you're shaving and then you put some on that area, um, you know, maybe nightly as you're going to bed, wear, you know, cotton underwear, uh, let it penetrate in there. You, and, and I'm not talking internally now, I'm talking externally around your shaving area. Um, you might uh, go ahead and prevent 
further irritation as the hair follicles start to grow back okay I you know I know it's a little TMI but I wanted to give you as much information as I can now on top of that uh, obviously you can use it on your uh, on your face and everything it's one of these really good uh, ones that you can use on your face and all of that so it's uh, you know it's it's good for all over you can use it on your body you can use it on your face it's just it's in my pantry all the time another um, antibacterial uh, oil that I like although this oil I have to tell you is um, one that you need to use a carrier oil with now carrier oil is a, a secondary oil so carrier oil could be like a jojoba or it could be the uh, an almond oil or it could be a uh, you know olive oil it could be one of these other oils or castor oil uh, this one um, the tea tree oil is very potent it's it's not something that you put on your skin uh, boom you know directly there can be an irritant to it and it, and it smells it doesn't smell good at all it smells highly medicinal highly medicinal this is not a facial oil this is not an oil that I use directly on my face for um, you know beauty benefits this is the type of oil that is used medicinally now you might ask you know what what do you mean by that Maria what I mean by that is again it's an antibacterial it's an antifungal okay if you have uh, for example my son had warts when he was younger he when he was like I don't know six or seven years old he came down with warts on his tummy and the doctor actually the dermatologist told me to use tea tree oil to um, kind of dry up the warts but also there's an antibacterial and antifungal element in it that will uh, basically get the warts to not come out um, from his body anymore because the warts are based on a viral it's kind of like a virus sort of thing and by using tea tree oil it it um it i can't explain it i'm not a medical professional but it basically um helps the body cope with this viral thing inside of it and and the uh the warts start to go away and sure enough I started using it now I did use it with a carrier oil I believe it was jojoba if I if I remember correctly and I would topically put it on his little you know wart areas on his tummy it took a while it took about um I would say a good three to four weeks to see some results but after a while it just started to um subside is all I can say just his wart started to subside and um one day I noticed that there were hardly any warts left on his body and it it worked on the warts the existing warts but it also worked on on the virus I guess maintaining it and having it you know not come out again so I, I don't know how it all worked guys but it worked it, it definitely definitely worked so that's one of the ones that I do keep in my cabinet for um, these types of situations I had actually a um, I don't know if you guys can see that do you see it it's a little bit dark there you can still see it because uh, you know it's kind of scarred but I I myself had like a little wart thing going on over here and the doctor told me it was some sort of tag like a dry skin tag again the dermatologist told me and um, he said well you know we could leave it alone or we could freeze it off or however you want to do it it's uh it's not cancerous it's not anything you know it's not going to cause anything bad but uh, I decided to use some of the tea tree oil on it and it took a while and I just kept using it and using it it took about a month maybe six weeks uh, to go through it but I could definitely it dried off that that little wart area and then it just kind of fell off and after that you know I do have that little discoloration which I'm working through by putting you know the various oils on my on my skin and it's gonna lighten up but it got rid of that tag it got rid of that uh, that dry patchy scaly kind of growth and um, I didn't have to go to, back to the dermatologist I didn't have to 
you know, spend extra money to have it uh, cut off or frozen off or whatever it is that dermatologists do when they have those kind of things. All right, the other one that I want to talk to you about is um, sweet almond oil. This is highly, highly potent as far as uh, vitamin D is concerned. Let's see if I can put that over here and get it to get, there you go. Um, yeah, I really love it. This is a huge bottle. It's like uh, six or four or six fluid ounces. It's a big bottle. Lasts you for a long, long time. It's got the squeezy pump on it. And uh, this is one of my go-tos as far as a high concentration of vitamin E is concerned. I love almond. It smells it smells really, really nice. I just, I love it. I love it. Um, and I can look this one up for you guys as well. Let me just uh, bring this up. Okay, almond oil benefits regulates cholesterol. One of the most widely known benefits of almond oil is its ability to regulate cho cholesterol. Now, obviously that's when you, you know, ingest it and use it. And you can use almond oil as an actual uh, ingredient in, um, you know, baking or anything else. Um, I wouldn't fry with it, but if you put a little like on a salad or anything like that, you can certainly ingest it. Um, it reduces risk of heart disease. It protects against diabetes and weight loss and all of that other stuff. Now, as far as for a uh, beautiful skin, I'll go ahead and look at this. Um, 12 remarkable benefits of uh, sweet almond oil. And uh, let's see, uh, blah, blah, blah. Very popular in Southeast Asia and in the Mediterranean regions where the almond tree was first uh, discovered. And uh, let's see, almond comes in two variants, bitter and sweet. So this is the sweet almond oil, obviously. It does have uh, fatal consequences if ingested. So this isn't one of the uh, ones that you wanna go ahead and ingest. Uh, it's great for having smooth, flawless skin, uh, baby-like skin. It's uh, suitable for after-bath application. Uh, it's got a nutty smell to it, obviously. And uh, you can mix a few drops of lavender oil uh, along with the uh, sweet almond oil if you want to do that for a soothing, relaxing type of bath. Some of the other benefits of almond oil are as follows and let me just put back my glasses again uh it's used as a deep cleansing for the skin now this is one of the reasons i use it it's a light texture and it penetrates deep into the skin softening and dislodging dirt and debris accumulated in the skin pores and hair follicles uh, again, one of the best ways to cleanse your skin is with the almond oil. Just you put a little bit on there, you know, and you rub it in your hand. And as it warms up on your face, it, it just does a wonderful job of, you know, taking off uh, all the makeup and everything else, debris and things that are clogged into your pores. It's just absolutely fabulous it also relieves um, eczema and psoriasis so if you guys have uh, that sort of skin uh, condition you can definitely use almond oil and again because of the high properties of the vitamin e in it it just uh, is fabulous for things like that and probably for the inflammation of course you know for psoriasis and eczema it does help with that um let's see it does have have uh you can also um use it for skin rashes again that that goes back to the whole psoriasis and eczema skin rash all of these type of things that are coming out on your skin uh, to you know help reduce the inflammation and it reduces fine lines and other signs signs of aging of course uh, they said um, it has a structural let's see smooth supple skin is a sign of youthfulness but a structural protein called collagen is behind this flawless look collagen forms an even layer under the skin and acts as a good padding that keeps the skin taut yet supple Fine uh, wrinkles start to appear as we age because of the thinning of the skin and all 
of course, you know, the collagen, um, you know, underneath kind of wearing down. With proper protective measure of skincare, the aging process can be slowed down to some extent. Almond oil has a role to play here. Oxidative stress is one main reason for the deterioration of collagen layer. Almond oil contains vitamin E, as we discuss, uh, which is one of the most potent antioxidants known. It also helps repair some of the damage done to the collagen layer. Uh, and it's especially rich in proteins and can provide amino acids required for the formation of collagen. So uh, again, almond oil, and I'm looking down at my bottle here, almond oil is one of the most uh, important oils that you can have and the most beneficial really for various treatments of skin um, ailments that come out uh, that are caused basically by allergens or inflammation of the skin. So that's that one. The last one that I want to talk about is castor oil. And that's a, that's a very interesting oil. It's very, very thick. I mean, I'm going to uh, show you guys this. It is a very, very thick oil. Very thick. There you go. Oh, there. And it does run down, but it's it's goopy. It's definitely goopy. This is one of those, um, it, it doesn't have much slip to it. It's almost tacky, almost tacky. You have to really work your um, fingers through it. It's, it's almost got the, not as sticky as honey, okay? But it's almost got that texture of thick, syrup like thick maple syrup or honey and it's one of these uh ones that is fabulous for your skin it's fabulous to grow um hair on your eyebrows and your eyelashes a number of people do that but it takes a commitment to do it it's something that you can do at night it's something that requires you to, you know, rub it into your uh, eyebrows and your lashes. So it takes, uh, it takes some doing. It's not just something you pat in there, boom, 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 it's a, and it's a done deal. Um, along with that, you know, you can use it under eye, under your eye. It's fabulous for your under eye because of its thickness. It's, it's just got these wonderful emollient properties to it, but it takes work. Again, it's not something you just slather on or put on there and you're good to go you know a lot of these others like argon argon is so quick i mean you just put it on you pat it in and it sucks its way in there and it's a done deal castor oil you got to work at it you really got to work at it you will derive the benefits of it but you got to work at it uh, I keep it on here um, and I use it for my eyebrows sometimes if I remember my eyelashes you have to be careful with your eyelashes because um, it's so goopy that you, you you might get a film around you know on your eyeball so you don't want to do that you just want to be very careful and just be you know kind of like above your eyelash right like right there kind of to trying to demonstrate if you have uh you can order one of those mascara little brushes uh from online somewhere or amazon or maybe even sally's beauty supply and then put a little bit of coat of castor oil on there and then brush your eyelashes just like you would a uh, mascara just brush it on there again before you go to sleep and coat your eyelashes with it um and then same thing with your um uh, you know your eyebrows again if you get a little spoolie and dip it in or you can use a, um, a q-tip you can also use a q-tip dip it in the castor oil and then uh, with the q-tip just put it around your eyebrows on both sides there it just it basically sticks where you put it it does it it has enough of that tackiness where it sticks where you put it now i am going to read you some of the health benefits if you should decide to ingest castor oil um it's got a lot of benefits for your your tummy uh let me go ahead and bring that one up here castor oil speeds up healing and improves your immunity it's known for uh, it says folk healers and this is off of the dr axe uh, website in case dr yeah, Dr. Axe, D-R-A-X-E.com 
website and you can uh, you know read this on your own but I'll read it really quickly here it says folk healers worldwide have used castor oil to treat a wide variety of health conditions for thousands of years the use of castor oil goes as far back as the ancient Egyptians and it's used to treat eye irritants and as a powerful natural skin care remedy in India castor oil has been prized for its skin healing digestive soothing antibacterial properties and is commonly used in traditional uh, medicine practices for centuries at the first sign of illness many mothers and grandparents would immediately turn to giving their children castor oil either topically or internally to naturally boost immune function and speed up healing derived from the seeds of the castor bean plant uh, records show that many years ago the plant was referred to as the palma christ christ day uh, because the shape of the plant leaves are said to resemble the palm of Christ. It's got chem the chemical composition. It's classified as a type of triglyceride fatty acid. Almost 90% of its fatty acid content is a specific and rare compound called ricinoleic acid. Castor oil is considered to be pretty unique because ricinoleic acid is not found in many other substances and it's such a dense concentrated source. It is produced by cold pressing the seeds and subsequent clarification of the oil by heat. Um, again, you know, you can use it internally um, for cosmetic, also externally for hair and skincare treatments. And um, let's see, castor benefits. Um, it supports lymphatic system. It increases circulation. It prevents growth of viruses, bacteria, yeasts, and molds, fighting skin disorders and infections. Um, it heals acne. Uh, it helps in hair growth. And of course, that's why I use it for, you know, eyebrows and the eyelashes. Uh, it fights toenail fungus as well and hydrates chap lips and reduces painful sunburn so it it has a myriad myriad of, of of healing properties both internally and externally um again you know for toes and fungus i have heard a lot of that uh usage in uh you know in my background with my grandmother of course the castor oil for the stomach um, to help digestion and anything of that nature. So I think that's it for all of the oils that I have been using in my household, um, mostly for beauty reasons, but also obviously there's a lot of health benefits as far as your skin and internally. And uh, as with anything, I am not a doctor. Please consult with your dermatologist or your healthcare physician, especially if you're planning to ingest uh, some of these uh, healthy beneficial oils in your everyday um, routine as far as you know your eating habits uh, just check with them first to make sure everything is honky dory with them and that you're able to ingest it and how much you should eat and in what ways you should eat it like I said with the almond oil it's not something that you want to heat up or fry with or anything you can spritz it a little on your salad um, you can probably take a tablespoon of it just uh, take it down if you can tolerate the taste of it uh, but do check with your physician to make sure that everything is okay with them okay um, thank you so much for joining me please give it a thumbs up I hope that this has been helpful for you guys and in information and again the reason I was reading it from some of these websites is because I didn't want to get any of the information wrong I don't have the best memory on God's planet so I can't memorize a whole script on especially uh, the variations of all of these oils and their minute differences and what they do and what they have you know um, as far as their benefits and everything so I wanted to get all the information right for you guys I hope that it was beneficial for you and please uh, subscribe if these type of videos are helpful for you and uh, let me know in your comments some of the oils that you are using both for uh, beneficial uh, purposes or topical purposes or of course skin uh, beauty and skin and uh, that kind of purposes okay I love you guys um, I'll talk to you in my next video and take care bye bye